Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and uh, if you're ready, it's over to you. <clears throat> yeah, I'm ready. Thank you for the introduction. And um, I, since last time, uh, I have had a huge uh, tour. I gave uh, workshops about this Nordic path of initiation in in Holland, both in Supfen and in Den Haag. And then I went to uh, Australia, uh, where I gave uh, the same two places in, in um, the southeast and southwest of Australia. And then I went to the Philippines, to Manila, and did the same there. So I had really been working with this Nordic path of initiation for one month now with new people. Um, and what has amazed me is that <clears throat> for every new workshop, it goes easier and easier. Mm -hmm. And I have been uh, raising that question to uh, to the groups, and I say you are better than the last one, and that I could say to every group, and they all answer me the same, <laughs> because I, I say it in in a way that I'm amazed, and I say, of course, when somebody have walked before, it's easier to walk after. And that reminds me of, of Rudolf Steiner. He said exactly the same when he gave this uh, path, the uh, so-called 19-hour path. In uh, He said in the spring of 24, I think, that it is very important that as many as possible walk this path. Otherwise, it will grow over. It will be closed. It will, or it will be more difficult, and and that was one of his uh, um, sorrows that not enough people went this path that he gave. This is uh, recorded in the book um, Rudolf Steiner's Leidensweg, where where uh, several is uh, re uh, recorded or that he he, he 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 said that to them and and was sort of a little sad that not more went this path um but there what i see now is exactly the same when when you all of you try to go this path it gets easier and easier mm -hmm. and and i'm very happy for that Um, so now there are training, uh, all these places, the Philippines, in Manila, in Australia, Perth, Melbourne, and in two places in Holland, in addition to the old groups in both Sweden, Norway, and America and Canada. So very good. So I would also ask you then, because now suddenly, since last time, let's say uh, a well, hundred more people are working with this path called the Nordic Path of Initiation. Have any of you observed or felt that it suddenly in the last month have become easier? Yes. Yes. You should take up a, can you, can you do that? Uh, take up a statistic if, <laughs> because that is extremely important. Uh, is there any statistic in this uh, mechanism to, um... to, that somebody can press some number and then you have uh, a statistic? Andre? Well, uh, yes. I mean, so, dear friends, I think you can. 
you can you can you can use uh, your chat box and uh, and uh, give absolute yes people are already reacting yeah, so i can see that yeah. <laughs> yes 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 uh -huh. andre yeah. you can make a poll and then you get oh. the statistics a poll you could yeah. offer well you are a computer person so i'm not so i can i can i can um uh make you co-host and you can uh, conduct it and do one okay but i think it's we have already yes 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 so at least five people said yes i yeah i see that it sh shows up here yes absolutely yes absolutely mm -hmm. and somebody said they are too new so they cannot uh, of course but uh, right. of course <clears throat> hmm. so so this actually i think uh, as so many have now commented the last month and also now you that this is a, a real thing that which is is of course in the forest if one person walk a path there is almost no change in the in the vegetation but more and more walk it then you can see it more and more clearly so i think this is extremely important within anthroposophy today because we have this problem we should go into the spiritual world and there help not just make our soul uh, yeah conscious or whatever we should go there and do things and this is a possibility and it seems to get easier and easier so this has occupied my mind very much lately, the last two, three weeks, that this uh, is important. And of course, this will also cause a counterattack. But uh, we have to stand in that and, 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 uh, and work with that when that comes. Um, is there anybody who have some comments on 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 what I just tried to say? Because I know this is quite new thoughts, uh, but not really. I mean, Steiner said the same, and uh, when we do that in real life when we go through a, a path then it gets bigger easier and easier and mm -hmm. that is that is so true and that is what we need to do yeah we uh, have uh three hands up um so is magda are you going to answer this question or bonnie magda magda any earth I can oh, that's it. it's Marga. Okay, Marga. I'm sorry. No, I, yeah. No, Marga. I didn't. I was yeah. just raising. I was just raising my hand. Is that if I have experienced how much easier it is? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I that's didn't... what asking uh, are you asking? Yeah, go ahead. That's it. Okay. So, um, so who is next? But are the uh, other comments because if it is like this, what do we do with it, and what does we? have to do with it and what does <clears throat> change in in possibility demand from us that that are my, my questions and that is to you as a group because i uh, cannot do anything then alone because this is a social uh, thing almost like Hari salman say that the social is now the new uh, mysteries mm. and the mystery is that we will then open this path into the spiritual through the door of the elements and i will say something later about the effect also on the other doors but first i would like to to hear what you think this change commit us to do yeah, I share. We oui, yes, Andre. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, great. Um, 
Yeah, I was at the uh, workshop in England in October or September of last year. <clears throat> and um, I was doing a lot of traveling. And to answer the question about, you know, what are the repercussions of of uh, practicing mer merging and fading. I don't think I've ever had such a difficult time traveling in my whole life, and I've traveled quite a lot. So um, that was one thing, uh, you know, almost feeling like I was being attacked at every at every point. Um, also, re more recently, um, I find it uh, more produ uh, most productive to fade into the um, reflections of the sun on the ocean. And I live a couple of miles from the ocean here in Santa Cruz. Um, and one day I wanted to go catch the, the sun as it was setting, because that's the best time, you know, like maybe an hour before. Uh, to catch the reflections, and um, so I was uh, driving, trying to find the right spot to sit, because it was a bit chilly, I was going to sit in my car and look out the window, um, and I could not find a parking place, I drove around in circles, and finally I found a place that was, you know, perfect, it was facing the right direction, so I parked on the side of the road, and there was, it was like parallel parking on one side on the right. And on the left side, there were, it was um, perpendicular parking. And it was kind of a narrow road. And on the left was the ocean. And just got there at the right time, ready to go. And a car backs into my car hmm. as I'm sitting there. Um, so anyway, that's that part. Um, but I wanted to ask about a particular experience that I had when I was uh, walking along the ocean and, you know, looking at the reflections in of the sun in the water, sparkling, dancing movements, um, like when we faded into the into the uh, uh, the knots of the floorboards in England in, uh, in Emerson you know, the, the movement all around. Um, but then it changed. I think I faded maybe 20 minutes or so, maybe half an hour. Um, the, the sparkling became, um, what's the word, perpendicular? Portals. But like there was one that was far away and then there was another one closer to me and then another one closer and closer they were like portals at different distances uh over the water in in the sparkling um you know reflection and uh it was just it was amazing it was like what is that you know what are they doing are these different you know i I'm, I was just. Um, and, and then, can I can I break in for a moment? Yeah, please, yes. And, and then you did what we have been talking about the first mistake because when something is then offered to you like this, then you try to ask, "What is this?" No, I asked and what you is put this after. Answer. I okay. didn't ask during. I good. asked afterwards. Okay. okay, good. So there's there's more. Yes. Okay. Then. Yes. So on. then I did I did uh open the space and asked Christ to enter. And um um seemed things seemed different after that. I I'm not sure I can explain how. Um but things seemed to change and then then yeah, that was it. Hmm. That's a comment, not a question, actually. Yes. Yeah, that I just wanted to finish my yeah, experience. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. I thought at the moment that you, you stopped by uh, putting the concepts on, but you did not, as I understand. I don't think so, no. Oh, good. Good.
I just tried to experience these, yeah. you know, different forms that were appearing. Uh, in this because part of my... often when you you fade in, you can actually experience it as some sort of portal opening. Uh, some sort of door. Um, and Rudolf Steiner call it often door to the spiritual. Or and some say portal and some say, uh, yeah. So, so, so yes, this experience of uh, uh, an opening, a door, a portal is quite common. And then you just fade in and continue. Mm -hmm. So what stopped you? What, where did it stop for you? Well, after I, you know, opened it and asked Christ in, um, I thought that was, that was what I was supposed to do. Okay, and, so you stopped there, yeah. Yeah, and I just kept on walking along, along mm. the, the beach. What is important, I think, uh, for all who, who practice this is to, when you have come to a certain point, quite many consider, okay, here I am, here, here it stops, here this was as far as I go today, or here, here I am. Um, and, and that stops it at that point. Uh, we should try it, you should try, we should try, then when you are at this point, not to stop, you just go on. Um, yes, that is my comment to your comment. <laughs> just, just go on. Don't put say, okay, that's that, because you see this path into the spiritual world is very long. We, 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 we uh, stop often, very soon, and think, okay, yes. I think I tried to go through the portals, but I yeah couldn't. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Okay, because... try again. Try again yeah. next time. <laughs> <laughs> Better luck next time. <laughs> Better luck next time. I think it's very good you come to that. Then you know where to go. So I think it's perfect. It just take, take longer time or more trials. Yeah, I think the longer fading uh, works for me. Yeah. Good. At the beginning, I always did around half an hour when I was small, you know, mm -hmm. like around 10 or 15. Then I always, it always took me half an hour to go in and then come out. Today, it is when training, it doesn't, it can go in five seconds, out five seconds. But at that time, it took half an hour. So I knew when I faded in, I was indisposed for half an hour. <laughs> So when I was, uh, they assigned me at some point in my life to be the guard of a bomb shelter, you know, the civil defense in Norway. And then I said, well, if I is in a fading, then I am not really good guard for half an hour. <laughs> so I was sent home. <laughs> okay, by thank the, you. By the doctor, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so, Dr. Penny and Ari, please uh, let me know when it's right time to deliver some questions from online. People. Yeah, first, first, I want to discuss this change that it is easier to go in and what mm -hmm. that demands from us. That is actually my focus now in the first part. So Excellent. I would like you all to, to focus more on that, his thoughts on that. Let's Does let's do it right after. So, doc, Doctor Doctor Penny Albert is next. Yeah, Penny, unmute yourself, please. Uh huh. Right. Wait. Hello and hello, Ari. I can't see Ari. 
Well, I am. Um, I must talk. Then you see me. Oh, I now, I, now I can see you. Thank you. But um, I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't meet in Australia. I Why left you didn't a we? <laughs> I left you a message. Did you get it? I don't remember. You know, it was. <laughs> okay. Um, I just couldn't afford to travel up and stay several nights overnight to do the workshops. Oh, and so, so, no problem. And so, and so I left a message saying I could get up and down for the day um, mm. on free public transport, and I asked them to give you that message when you arrived so I could come if you thought it was worth it. Um, but I didn't hear. Um, no, so I, I haven't either. I <laughs> Uh, well, communications didn't work, um, but I'm gathering it's not the end of the world. So uh, picking up from here then, um, yes, I've experienced a distinct change since our last workshop, but I would, easier is the last word I would ever have used. Um, <laughs> I've experienced it getting rapidly more intense and yeah. um a cascading series of a sort of uh, mini catastrophes. Um, and I think it's all just culminated. Uh, my mother died 24 hours ago. So it's been one thing after another, after another, after another. Um, and it's resulted in something very different and I think very important opening up. Um, I can save that till later if you want to get more feedback on the actual changes that people are experiencing. Yeah, that is my main object just now, yes. I've had an experience of Baba Yaga and I want to talk about that, but if you want to leave that till later on. Um, yeah, we, we concentrate on the changes so I, I, I need to hear that from you. Yes. Um, I had a, a sort of mini emotional collapse, I think is the best way to describe it, about four days ago. And I had an intuition that my mother was dying and her photo fell off the wall. Um, so I think I've been in a state of continuous... Um, bodily collect connection. I have not been doing any formal practice because I felt if I did, it might tip everything over the edge. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't think I've been coming out of it properly at all. No. I, I had a massage and the masseur said to me that I was way up here above my body. Um, and I have always had a little bit of trouble getting back into the body. Um, there's that, some agonizing few seconds when you're fully conscious and you can't control the body, which is uh, for me a really horrible um, situation where you fear for a moment that maybe you'll never be able to control it again, but then you know that the control comes back. And I mm -hmm. think I might have a history of not quite getting back into the body after I've been doing some work and then being sort of semi-permanently a little bit out of it for two months. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. So it's been mm. very up and down and unstable. And I mean, I'm still here and I think I'm sane, but <laughs> <laughs> there's, cer there's certainly been an intensification of energies, put it that way. So okay. that's mine. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Others? Okay. Jordan? Yeah, go ahead. So, yes, I'd like to speak to um, it becoming uh, a little easier. What I've noticed is um, actually, actually, it's been almost accidental that, um, like, if I go into nature and I sit by a creek and it's winter here, so there's snow, um, for instance. I went and sat near the creek and I just accidentally started fading. Um, and and it immediately took me to where I've been, which is um, at 
at the guardians, but I always ask to speak to the guardians. Um, and usually, um, over the past few months, they always tell me to go, uh, speak to Anna, but this time when I accidentally faded, um, uh, Merlin popped in, which I thought was, um, I had never experienced that before. And I just wanted to ask Ari, um, if when we encounter, like if we're at, at the guardians and they tell me to go, you know, see Anna or, you know, another being comes in like Merlin at that point, does he have any suggestions on what to do when we meet, um, someone that comes in? Like, I don't know, I guess I just need some guidance on that, but, um, to speak to it becoming easier, it definitely almost feels like it's just, you know, in, in everyday occurrences, like if I'm walking out in nature, it's just like, I begin to just do that automatically. Um, if I'm in a state where, you know, I'm calm enough and really connecting with nature is when it seems to happen, um, the most. Well, every time, uh, and that if you have read my books, that happens all the time. They, Everybody say, you should talk to him. You would go there, go there into the earth or, or so. So I always follow those advices because they are the guardians or I rather call the teachers. So I, I do that. And I think you should do that. Then. That is my simple answer to that. Just, okay, ask them, yeah, why they've appeared. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I I just wanted to also ask um, with Anna, if you have, um, if you have any like advice or um, reasons or have you had any experiences with her of why in particular she's here working with us, like why she's a prominent um, figure for us right now to work with? I don't think she is here for especially us. Mm -hmm. I think she is sort of the mother of the universe. Um, and I also work a lot with her and think about her and I don't think I think she is for everybody yeah uh, so not just for us but uh, as we now have a means to travel in the spiritual world in the both the elemental and the etheric then she is a natural meat uh, you will meet her and that is why the teachers of Chartres had her as a dominating figure of the northern wall, uh, overlooking everybody who went in and out of Chartres. So I think she is an extremely important guide or, or guard or guardian, which everybody will meet and and ask for guidance of course and that will and <clears throat> that i have seen more and more now that all that is taught us in the spiritual world is individual that is what we need to hear it's not that the guardian or the treasure say exactly this or this or this it might be very different so you should uh, just ask her, what shall I do? Be open, like you meet a very, very learned professor. You say, what do I lack in my mathematics? What do I lack in my physics? And just take that answer for correct. Okay. Mm. And was it a city that you were talking about just now that she was a guardian of, or...? I didn't recognize what you were saying. Um, she, no, no, she yeah. is. Uh, well, I met her when I went into the earth and came to the seventh layer. Yes, sorry. I, um, the place that... I was on my way deeper, but there I met her and then it. Uh, I, I, I chose another path. Maybe someone could put in the chat what... Chartres. 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 Ch
Yes. Oh, the Chartres, yeah. Thank you. That, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Chartres Cathedral in in France. Oh, in oh, 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 okay, wonderful. Yeah. Thank you and so the much. whole northern wall there is dedicated to Anna. She is a wow. statue there, and under her, on both sides, is a two huge wooden oak doors, one leading in, one leading out, and she sort of overlooks everything that goes in and out of the of the church. And that is exactly how it is in in reality. She is letting everybody those out of this universe and she is letting those who is supposed to go into our universe um so, so these teachers of shatras they knew exactly what they what they did when they, they put her up there thank you so much yeah, yeah. thank you very much lois lois are you back polite are you present I'm, here? I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay, go okay. ahead. It's your, it's your time. Okay. Um, what has changed, Ari, is, and I agree with someone else, who, the last speaker who said spontaneous, um, and also through my hand. And it just spontaneously happened that I faded through my hand because my little bird was uh, not feeling well, and it, it was on a blanket on my bed and I just sort of cut my hand around it and then I found myself fading through my hand so mm -hmm. that was new but also what I experienced brings the other question that you asked which was a question that I had for you um what are we to do with it and where I ended up going through my hand was through an ancestral wound and I experienced it as a horn as a almost like when you on your foot when it gets rubbed and it makes this little corn that goes deep in mm. and i found myself going into this horn spiraling and unwrapping it and opening it and i was going through family members and trying to go back through and it was opening so my question to you is um and and this what are we to do with this are we going to be healing back through um, uh, the generations? Generations, that was the word I was looking for. Is yeah. that something, because that would go to the future too, if we're healing back through the generations, we're yeah. healing what we're now calling a timeline. Is that something that we're supposed to be doing with that? Yeah, well, uh, this is very very interesting that you say because I have been saying that many times when we go through the elemental world there are two sort of purposes two options we can do something where we are and in the third elemental realm we can do what Steiner called uh, hygienic occultism and there we can go either through the generations we can go through the father line there are certain techniques i use there or the mother line or we can also go into this more spiritual line but that is the healing process and that we can do there when we are fading through the elemental world when we come to the second elemental realm there we can do mechanical occultism influence the machine the spirituality of machines the etheric forces of the machines and in the first realm we can do the eugenic occultism that means birth death <clears throat> but if we want to go meet the guardian of the threshold, then we should not stop doing this. Stop and do this. But not stopping doing this, but we should not stop on our travel and do these occultisms. We should continue. We should continue straight ahead till we reach the huge threshold of the between the elemental world and the etheric world. 
where we meet the guardian of the threshold, which is, uh, by the way, Vidar. I have, um, in Holland, I have been discussing with several anthroposophists this with who Vidar is. And uh, because they have been studying then uh, Steiner, what he said about Vidar Steiner and also Prokofiev, not what Prokofiev said, but what he <laughs> reported Steiner said. And uh, some places he said, Vidar said, he, Steiner said that Vidar, okay, he is the new guardian of the threshold. He is a new archangel. He is the sun archangel. He is the bringer of Christ. He is the guardian of the north and he is the Norwegian folk spirit. So uh, Prokofiev had done this uh, proposal that he was sort of, uh, there were several Vidars. Uh, so I was asked to ask him, so I, I did. And of course, this is different aspects of his greatness. So he is both uh, guardian of the threshold. He is both the archangel of the sun, the new archangel after or under Mikael. He is also the uh, guardian of the north, the bringer of Christianity, and additionally, the Norwegian folk soul. <laughs> uh, so he can be he more things. So that is uh you have to sort of decide when you go into th either through your hands through the bird through your will through your heart through your thinking you can fade in but uh, either way you have to decide shall i go and do something or shall i just continue till i meet the guardian of the threshold and after that stay there go further into the spiritual world. There's two different things, sort of, which, of course, can be combined on the way. Good. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very much. So, Nick. Good day, Ara. Nice to see you again. Thank you so Thank much you. for doing this. I have seen you before. <laughs> A couple. <laughs> Uh, to exactly what you are talking about right now, uh, since the last video, uh, and Jordan Reed had said that she just had to ask the mother and go uh, go down to visit her and ask, ask if you could help. Uh, it, it uh, I knew I could do it, and then that since then I every every two days I try my best uh, to go down. Well, when I first went down. Uh, I just use my will and I just drop down through the layers of the, of the elemental world. I had asked permission first to go through down. Then I, uh, once uh, I got to the seventh layer, because you told me it was there, uh, I immediately started weeping. Very, mm -hmm. very, I was, the sadness was more intense than I had, uh, than I had experienced prior. And it was, uh, it felt a little it felt foreign to me, so I really knew this was real. This was something that I did, and I wanted to be there. And when I was there, I, I asked, just like you said, I asked to help. I wanted to help because things needed to need to get done, and mm. and she let me, and she let me, and I and I went down, and uh, I didn't know what to do. You know, uh, that's going to be my that's my question to you. I'd love to know. Uh, some specifics of what you do to use your will and mind to push the gold from the east to the west. I have a, a technique that I've tried that I would I would share if you would like to hear it. Uh, not maybe right now, but maybe later. But that happened right after, and I was doing it, but I couldn't feel if it was working. You know, I, my is this just in my mind? Is it just imagination? Uh, and then on February seventh, that was the day. This is the day that I think you're referencing right now. Something came to me. I had something to do with accepting my guardian angels or people that were around that were trying to help me, some love that was being come to me. 
and I believed it. And that made me believe in myself. And that then expanded more. I had to start talking to people, this chat specifically in the telegram. I just wanted to encourage people to do. And like if it does, it's that is what I feel. And it's come stronger every day to do, to do, as well as the river, the river and water, water, water and doing and Christianizing water and keeping the rivers clean and making it beautiful for all. For all. And that's become stronger every day since. Uh, and now I'm here talking about it. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to ask a question about this later, though, when that is appropriate. Mm. Go ahead, Tim. Oh, to ask now? Okay, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what I said. Oh, sorry, thank you. Uh, when I first started going down, I was just trying to imagine what to do and what was the best thing. Uh, and I didn't know it was going faster or slower, which which layer was. Uh, I figure that you guys are working on in the very middle. Uh, the the lady from Dornach, uh, as some of your other uh, people, I'm assuming they're in the middle. So I figured I want to go to the 10th layer where there might be less uh, less people working. Uh, and I started just by moving balls of gold. I'd come in, I just Christianize some gold, and I just push it away to the west. Uh, I just kept on doing that. It didn't feel as like efficient, and I couldn't do it while I wasn't there. So I wanted to do something that could still be functioning while I am when I'm not fully faded. Uh, so I came up with the idea of a of a machine, uh, a water vest or a gold wheel, we'll call it. Uh, I after asking, I, I go down. Uh, I then use what I like to think is the, the cosmic energy through my crown to become immense. Like I'm so big down in this uh, in this world that uh, I can do whatever I wish. I build this. I built this giant gold water wheel that just keeps going around. It's kind of attached to the ninth wall, ninth layer wall, and just keeps spinning around. I, I, I made a little something here. I tried to try to, to make a visualization, but it just keeps spinning around and around like this. It's perfectly weighted. The gears are all nice. So it always spins. Uh, and then I didn't think it was going fast enough because I couldn't feel anything. So I wanted more. So then I came up with a like a, a music box gear, which I also have, you know, I just the concept of, of winding a music box uh, was enough to uh, then. So now I go down and I wind the my music box. So it sets for 48 hours and my wheel spins. And it, I think about it during the day and I keep feeling it spinning and I just keep the active living thought of it alive, knowing that it is doing good, knowing that it is. I believe something Anna asked me to do. Uh, she hasn't told me it's bad yet, so I, <laughs> I just wanted to share this. And it's all driven through my will and imagination. Uh, when I'm there, like this is literally what I do. Like I, I close my eyes, like I'm literally winding this massive gear, and it's all perfectly geared. So one little turn can make this massive wheel, which is the size of Southern Ontario. When I'm down there, like I've made it so big that is it touches all the Great Lakes. Uh, and I'm also a, ma a mountain when I do it, just to help help give that kind of energy is what I tell myself. Uh, and I really feel I, I've been feeling positive. But I felt very the need to share this right now. So mm. if this is not right, please tell me. And I would love to hear any more efficient uh, things to uh, to help this, to help this process. Well, it's Thank interesting you. to hear you because uh, apart from uh, you have a little more vivid imagination than I have, but we are doing essentially the same thing. Uh, I have just written about that in a new book I have, I'm writing on. And... Uh, I have been doing this going down to about that area and trying to to do what you so vividly described, but I do it more with my <laughs> hands. Um, you have this possibility or you have the possibility of going uh, down the evil earth to the sixth layer and there directly 
completely counteract the iron. Mm -hmm. And I was so uh, lucky, actually, on the Philippines, they took me to a, a special volcano called Tal, uh, about one hour south of Manila. And when I came there, the owner of that area said that there had been several prominent anthroposophists from Dornach visiting this special volcano and drawing it again and again and again. And that uh, I found quite um, interesting. Why should uh, leaders from Dornach visit this volcano in the Philippines and drawing it? So I tried to, uh, I have tried to go through several volcanoes in the world. In Iceland, it is open down to the fourth layer. In Vesuvius, I managed to come to the uh, fifth layer. But in this active volcano, which they said was the most active volcano in the Philippines, I managed to come down to the sixth layer. And I think that is what these uh, anthroposophic leaders from Dornach uh, had some uh, knowledge about. So I went down there and there I tried directly to counteract the movement of the iron. So this in my knowledge now is two ways, either the sixth layer or the 10th, 11th of the good earth. Yeah, that was just a comment to what you said. That was my, that was the that was my second part of this question is that because let's, let's battle this from two fronts, you know, like it's not just yeah. uh, deal the gold. Yeah. What, what I was doing though, I didn't realize I had to go through the evil. I was going, I was just pop, I pop up when when I'm going back to my body after saying goodbye to Anna after doing my work. Yeah, I've been just popping up and putting a quick dam up. I keep a little like wave to so it can flow, and I tell Darren, "Stay here, go, go back to the west. You don't need to flow far." Uh, yeah. But I, you know what? When I do this in a bath that is Christianized and when I'm signed, sitting in it, this is all easier. And I can, I feel like I can quench iron. I can quench mm. it to stop it. Mm. Uh, I say it, I say it and uh, out loud as well. But we'll leave it with that. So I just described these two possibilities. Uh, is that wrong though? I, I don't need to do that. If that is wrong, I do not need to do that. No, you can do both, but uh, <laughs> it's easier to do what you described. Excellent. Thank you. I needed actually a volcano to get down <laughs> to the sick. And, you know, this uh, portal down through this volcano on the Philippines, that is also used by the black magicians there, which there are many of in the Philippines. But let us leave it there. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you very much, Ara. I appreciate so much. Thank you much. Uh, Mary is next. Mary. Burton. Um, hi. Um, I just thought I would give a perspective on of um how the, how things have changed for someone that's only been doing it a couple of months. Hmm. Um at first I struggled to fade into anything. I've never been able to do it with a candle or anything. Um I have managed with the sky and um, or just looking at a, a white pillow. Um, but the other day I was, and, and I don't, I don't sort of see anything except for just sort of swarming black things or, or little white comet things in the sky, things like that. I don't actually see anything other than that. Um, but the other day I was at the osteopath and I was on a massage table with my head down. I just, automatically just faded into the carpet, which was quite strange. All the carpet just started moving and zipping around. And yeah, so that that was definitely unexpected. And since then, I felt quite um, different in my body, like I couldn't feel the energy flow through my body quite, quite easily. Um, so, and I guess mood, my mood has been a bit all over the place, but um, I've been doing a fair bit of sort of personal growth as well, so I kind of put it down to that as well. Um, yeah, so that they were my experiences. 
Um, just wondering, yeah, I guess I just, just wondering, um, am I stopping myself? I mean, I, I, I keep hearing you say, go, keep going, moving forward, moving forward. And I, and I try not to attach any thoughts to things. Um, so yeah, I guess just wanting some, um, encouragement. Yeah, uh, thoughts, it's especially concepts that you must avoid. That seems to stop everything. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so, so yes, when you are in such an experience, then just go into it again, deeper, and then you see it will change. And then it comes like layer after layer after layer. That's quite important. And then, then you can continue if you can, because... Almost everybody put on then a concept and say, oh, what is that? Is that an eye? Is that a movement? Is that, yes. <laughs> so we all do that mistake. I, it seems in, uh, impossible to, to not. And I guess um, the thing that has changed lately is I'm, I'm starting to see different colors as well. So that's, hmm. that's a new thing just in the last couple of days. Yeah. It is movement, it is colors, the world around gets sort of transparent or even darker, and then you can go into this portal or door or, or what you call it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good. Just continue. Thank you very much. So, Diane? Diane, please unmute your machine. Yeah, I was trying. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you, Ara. I've been listening the last week or so, and um, I would like to comment about the the question about the pushback. About the... Pushback. Pushback, yeah. You said what kind of pushback is going to come, and um, just refer back to your also your comment that many people, or not many people, could go the way that... Rudolf Steiner was describing in 24 and that if you take these lectures um, called uh, Die Weihnachtstagung zur Begründung der Allgemeine Anthropologischen Gesellschaft, also the uh, Foundation Stone Lectures for the Foundation of the Anthroposophical Society, and you can find almost every other uh, page where Rudolf Steiner talks about the personal relationships. Um, he says, this is not going to be a, what do you call it, the Vorstand, uh, so the board. It's not going to be a traditional one. It's going to be some, an interest board where people are interested in what's going on with the others in the society. And um, you can find all these comments made by him again and again and again, interest for the other people, enthusiasm for what people are doing in the society and so on. And if you ask me, especially when you think about another, some articles have been in Europea about Bruno Kruger, who worked very hard for the threefold question of the threefold society. Um, and he was ignored, unfortunately, by the anthroposophists in Berlin, in Stuttgart, in Dornop. Everywhere he went, he was kind of ignored and excluded from their activities. And I think that the pushback will be much less if people really realize that the whole thing is about the society and how we we work together, not just in the anthroposophical society or in the anthroposophical work, but in the society as a whole. So my question to you, because I give lectures and seminars about this threefold society thing, and I agree with that statement you said about what Solomon said, this is the new mysterium. This is the new mystery place, is the social life and the social work. How, wh how does this relate to the demons? Of course, there's things from Rudolf Steiner. The demons weave this social life. We live in it. It's like the social life is the elemental forces between the people weaving in the spheres of the cultural life, the, the jurist, uh, the uh, rights, the life of the rights and the right li life of the production, the manufacturing. They weave our connections. Um, 
and it's full of demons. <laughs> it's just completely yes, it demonized. Is. It's it is. totally demonized. Yeah. Yes, it is. So, so this what, is what I what think one has to do for the pushback, you're saying. You know, be yeah. aware and start to work in this whole sphere. Don't ignore the threefold. That is what you can do is to Christianize these elemental beings. Mm. And that change the effect and that spreads. But to Christianize them, you have to, in a way, observe them. Mm. So, and to observe them, you have to fade. Merge into the elemental world. There, what we practicing there, you can see the elemental beings, all a society, all a relationship, all a family, all, uh, yeah, whatever, community. And you will observe then when you see them that they are demonized. They are Luciferic, Arimanic, Assyric. They are not Christianized. If you then Christianize these elemental beings, you change their behavior uh, totally. And one of the laws in the elemental world is that these demons, as you said, because I worked, I written several books about demons and healing, and and I worked with demons quite much. They always translocate. They can move. They go to other places. They avoid you. But if you Christianize them, they do not translocate and then they, this effect of the Christianization is spreading that is what we can do you think um, well of course I think you're correct but on the other hand, I think also we need to um, go into this, let's call it the boring lectures and things that Rudra Steiner gave really maybe hundreds of and write, writings about the threefold and um, figure out maybe it would be a great help if we can all fade. But even if we can't exactly fade into it in the way you're describing, um, realize that how to Christianize these spheres um through through starting to transform this world of the yeah. social life and then we can transform it through like just the plain old common sense on the first level and it will become an area that will not demonize us so entirely through our entire lives that we have difficulties fading and doing all these things. We have to work from that way as well yes. to be able to promote the work you're doing. But now, I will, say something. now yeah. I will say something that you won't like. What? Now I will say something that you probably will not like to hear, and that is uh, very... A distinct teaching from Vidar is that the threefoldness is transforming into a fourfoldness. I remember first time I met that idea was uh, Otto Wolf, who was in uh, in Norway to teach uh, anthroposophic doctors. And then mm. that was 30 years ago when he said, we have to get away from this threefoldness in the human body. It doesn't work anymore. And I was in shock, but I uh, had already thought it, so I um, I followed it. And one very important teaching by Vida is that both the body and the uh, senses and the soul and the society is working toward a fourfoldness. So that a threefoldness will be more and more in the past. 
and the four the fourth element or the fourth uh, sphere is what did Otto think and what do you think? Thinking, feeling, willing. It's a three old, if I mm. take that one. And then Vidar said that the fourth, which is developing now, has no name yet, but he called it time, karma, Christ. Mm -hmm. And this also opens a new portal. Steiner said there are three doors into the spiritual world, the door of the of the elements, the door of the death, and the door of the sun. And one time he mentioned there is also going to be a fourth door, which will be opened by Christ when from 1930 on. And uh, that I didn't know, he said, but I was starting a few months ago to write a new book, which is called The Fourth Door. And then somebody sent me a quote from Steiner who said exactly this will be the fourth door and that is reliant on Christ. Uh, so this ability of the soul, time, karma, Christ is opening also a fourth door, which I call the door of the light, which is governed by Christ. And that is a fourfoldness, both in the doors of the spiritual world, of the soul, of ourself, and also in society. Well, well it's, no uh, we not cannot, like we're it. not going to discuss that here, but this is uh, a very, very important teaching of Vidar. The threefoldness is going into a fourfoldness, just mm -hmm. as Otto Wolf actually said. 30 years ago but he said it in private not in writing yeah. okay okay so thank you so much so next person is nancy mcmillan nancy hello um trying to see ari maybe maybe ari needs to speak hi Hi, hi. No, just there we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Um, yeah. So, so I, I do things pretty slowly because it feels like there's such a big reaction often um, with my fading, even though I, I feel I'm fading through maybe a combination of my eyes and my heart. Um, and I'm meeting how to do that each time in, in sort of an individual way, I guess. Um, certain things keep repeating in terms of meeting the different things that we've talked about before. And so I'm getting a little bit of a, a sense of, of that landscape. Um, more recently, it feels like I'm being, a, the feeling of being accompanied by something. And maybe my visuals are not very, good so I, I'm not really able to visualize it but it's a felt sense of a presence accompanying me when I'm on this traveling um, and when I'm trying to look a little more carefully that's when the feeling of this really big head came um, and and so that kind of I had no idea what that was so I was just, just keeping with that but then it kind of came into more of a body full presence and as I shift towards my heart it often moves to this a very physical feeling of my chest expanding uh, a sort of a muscular kind of feeling so I'm anyway these are all experiences and then sometimes the words will come something like this is the point of what we're doing this is about freedom mm. um that was the words that um that came the point of this is freedom um and then if i'm trying to keep moving I, at one point there was this letting go i'm trying to let go more at the edge of that and it was like a time warp of just a zoom of consciousness that felt like a travel to somewhere else but I, very hard to hold that because it felt new or different 
um, and I can't really see there, but it's a feeling of, of bigness. Um, so I, at some point I come back to, to out from that place. And then I'm just so filled with so much energy. It's like a very heightened energy, um, mm. a euphoric type of energy. And then I have, I have to pay attention to the grounding of myself and this echoes a few people's conversations about how to come back. So I remember that night just sitting by the fire and really tending the fire and um, knitting or something. And that felt like I was coming back in. But then that night, I certainly had dreams of meeting a very difficult beings, demon-like beings. Um, and one from a, from this liminal place of half wake and half not a being almost from the fire with a lot of cloudy dark rolling smoke covering the face and so i leaned into christianize that being yes what happened that was very cool the smoke the beard, cloudy smoke lifted like it was being a facelift and like a mask was being lifted. And I could see just a, a faint sense of pink skin underneath. That mm. was the moment, yeah. <laughs> so that's a bit of a question is when we get these feelings of maybe counterattack, as you say, um, because I know another time it was like I when I left the meditation, I felt like I was shoved. And another time I woke up and my shoulders were all messed up again. And so it felt like there's an irritation that comes into me, either emotionally or physically. So maybe can we then move to Christianize the the sense of being counterattacked? Yes. That that is the that is the weapon we have. Also, when we go through the elemental realms, we go through the realms of the adversarials or evil. And I must remind everybody that Steiner said in the future to get to Christ, we have to go through the realms of evil. Uh, we will do that, but we have then the. Uh, Christ, we have Christ, and we can Christianize the elemental beings, and that is our duty. That is one of our duties. As I said, passing through the elemental world, well, if we want just to pass it and get to the threshold and meet the guardian and go on, that is one thing, but we have also a work to do in the elemental world. We have a work to do like uh, Steiner say in the iron necessity of the time that uh, Andrew Linnell very often referred to that there is a necessity for our work in the elemental world and that is to deal with or, or conquer or master the three occultisms which I which is the uh, the uh, uh, occultism of the hygienic, the mechanic, and the eugenic, which I personally think we can only do if we Christianize the elemental beings of these realms. And when we do that, then we can do these occultisms. If we don't, we cannot do that. So, so that is our, uh, we, we will do on the path because we will meet evil. And if we are very easily scared, of course, like you said, you met this demon with a beard and whatever, it could be scary. Uh, and fear is one of our greatest enemies on this path. Uh, so then we must, Christianize these elemental beings and by that bring salvation into the elemental world and open the path for us and others and also doing the first steps on the 
um, the possibility of the three occultisms. And I will also add at this point, because I see time is also running, that listen to you now. I mean, listening to you the first six or seven times was like being in a, a kindergarten. Don't uh, take me wrong. But now it is almost like you have graduated. It's it's so much more. All that I've here heard is actually on now on an individual path. It is opening. I am very excited about what I heard today. In the as a first first six, seven. I don't really know where we are, but um, it was sort of very fundamental. Two plus two is four. And I repeated two plus two is four. Two plus two is four. Listen now. Eight minus four is four. It was like going on like that. Now it is really a discussion, bringing ideas, bringing aspects of this elemental world. So I... So my question in the beginning, is it now easier to go on this path? I don't have to ask that because I hear from what you say. It is. So thank you, everybody. That is very nice for me to hear. Great. Thank you. Can I just add to that as the question of how to further this work? Um, I, I work in different small groups working towards you know, intentions or prayerful things. And I think I mentioned this last time, is it, can we mobilize this more in a group setting? We're doing this in our individual ways, but is there a group practice that we can develop? Yeah, well, uh, I'm... <laughs> In my, I, I'm very old fashioned. So in my mind, the groups is when four or five people meet, you know, and and like that. So uh, now we are a group that is all around the world. There are people here from the whole world, I guess. Uh, probably about Australia and Europe and 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 uh, England, Germany, America, Canada. How do we form a group? Uh, because there is the, 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 the space is not important when you are working in the elemental world. So it should be fully possible. Mm -hmm. And time is not that important either. So just that we meet like this, it's now 68 of us being here in this group uh, and discussing these experiences and dealing with the same problematics and the same sort of ideological foundation, I think that makes us a group. And I think that makes it easier for everyone. We are helping each other to walk this path. And the more who walk this path, one walk on the little left side, one walk a little right side, one walk a little up, down. We do our individual, but still it makes this is the road better and better? So I'm 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 uh, I'm very happy with this today's session. I think we are a group. That is the answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So, Anaj, celebrating. Thank you. Hello, Ari. Hi. <laughs> um. It's good to see you. I, uh, I from uh, I started with you in the Calgary in the with the veterinarians. Oh yes, and uh, so I've been you know doing the middle point, opening the middle point for people and for animals. For can you know, I first ex can I first oh, explain yes. to everybody what we did in Calgary? Yes, yes, and also the feedback I got from uh, from the uh, from um, Julie, Julie. Uh, we had a uh, little more than a year ago, we had a workshop of Christianizing the elemental being of disease in dogs. Julie Shell is a clinician in, in Calgary, have a small animal clinic. And she is so dedicated that she followed. So we, 
in every dog, we did not treat the disease. We treated either in the middle or in 90 degrees. That means we did not treat, let's say it was a kidney problem. We don't treat the kidney. We go through then the 90 degree gallbladder or the middle. So that means totally non-school uh, medicine, really. And then, as I told you, if you are treat a disease, either with school medicine, with homeopathics, with acupuncture, and so on, then you usually translocate the elemental being of the disease. And then this will hurt others. It goes to others in the family or in the neighborhood or, or, or something. But if we then Christianize these elemental beings, it will not hurt others. It will do the opposite. It will help others. And now I got just a few weeks before I went on my Asian tour. So that means four, five, six weeks ago about. I got a mail from Julie Shell, and she had followed every patient during a year. And she said it is amazing. Mm. They have all gotten better or cured. And in addition, several of the owners have been healed from cancer. Wow. Yeah, that was just to explain to everybody the, the meaning of Calgary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I, I, you know, I, I did, I, I've been doing the, the, the middle point and treating the 90 degree for many people, but there was like a doubt, you know, still like doubt is, is this really making a difference? And there's like a discouraging and, uh, you know, I started, I've also done, um, psilocybin, uh, you know, psychedelic mushrooms. And then when I go in there, all of a sudden I found myself going into the different body parts and, and opening the middle point in, in different body parts where I could see them the middle. So that encouraged me to, to get back into this path. And then in one of the journeys, I, I heard Bidar and he talked to me. And, and um, so that, that's when I really got your last, last book of merging and fading. And I started watching all these videos and starting to practice. So just like I got called back to really, disciplining myself into back into like really understanding merging and fading and i've been practicing every day you know for the last month and um just that's that's kind of like how i felt and I, and i felt encouraged to really go back and 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 share this work with with people with lay people just to just to offer it more as as, as a healing so just people get christianized and they're they're elementals and uh and again, and I guess my my question is, I, it is going a little back to the fundamentals, but because I'm just kind of like practicing this, the 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 fading and merging. I don't know if I'm if I'm doing it too hard, but I, I I I have the coffee with the sugar, and I I fade, and all of a sudden like my my eyelids go a little down, so it gets like almost dark, but I can still see the 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 coffee. And then it just kind of like fades and it just see blurry. And I feel all this energy coming from my feet all the way through the, the column. And then I feel this pull here. And I, I, I am, sometimes I see a little figure or something. And I just keep pushing and I keep like, I, I throw my energy towards it and I keep <laughs> going at it. And sometimes I feel like it's almost like the, the eyelids are going like this like really, really fast. And, and, and then I just feel like a pull, like it's pulling me back. Like my, my, so I don't know if I'm forcing it too much. I know this is new, so I don't know if it's, if I'm, if I'm on the right path or if I'm just forcing it or if there's. Well, I, it was a very uh, <laughs> heavy description. Maybe you are uh, forcing a little, I, uh... <laughs> But I, you are maybe a much more type forcing type. I would, uh, I think, I would do it more calmly. <laughs> <laughs> but we are different, so I, I, who am I to say that? Who mm -hmm. am I to say that? Yeah, but but the the idea that uh, like the eyelids kind of close, so there's like a black screen in front of me, and then there's a little bit, and that's where I start to see the things. Is that is that? 
you should hold your eyes open. That is important. Like fully open, full open. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hold them open and uh -huh. then merge. And then okay. it's darker in the, in the circumferences. And then you start to see a movement in this middle. Okay. Okay. So maybe, after yeah, this, maybe, maybe. I was this, and then you go through the movement and you see an eye, you go through the eye, then you see a face. Okay. And then you are very far into the elemental, the third realm of the elemental world. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. Don't take it too uh, fast. Take yeah. take your time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. And and uh, and drop the psilocybin, I guess. Mm -hmm. okay. Try to do it without. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, might yeah. help at certain points, I I guess, but uh, mm -hmm. I I'm not really fond of that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, um, Justina. Yes. Hi. Hi. Excellent. Hi. Uh, so I would like to say that this last month has also been very um, much more visual. And um, recently when I've placed my hands on a patient's body um, in a very specific place, it allows me to fade in further and faster. And then I start to see crystal like water or dark shadows. And I'm wondering if I am in their middle point or if I'm um, seeing the middle point of the patient themselves. Like, what is this significance of this point that I'm touching? Oh, now you come to a very um, medical uh, question, actually. Uh, when, and I can only describe how I do that, when I use that technique to, to look into a patient, I fade out and then I sort of scan through the whole body. I don't go into a certain point. I scan through it and then I observe where there is trauma. Yeah. And then I say, okay, here's a problem with that organ or that muscle or that bone. So when I see, um, let's say, a darker shadow, like a, a movement, and there's there's a being yeah. there, is right. it okay to go to that being directly, or yes. is that going to be moving yes. him? Then, then you can go into that being and open the middle and crystallize it. Okay. And then you totally change the effect or the pathological effect that that being has. Yes. Okay. But you, you go in, you, you fade, but not in through a specific point. You can fade wherever you want. And then you sort of scan. It's almost like a, a, a magnetic um, MRI. You, you scan, you make incisions. And then you, mm -hmm. you very clearly see, uh, see where there is some problems. I usually see it as as stagnant blood, these pathological elemental beings. Or a How shadow. So? A shadow. Yeah, uh, coagulating blood, stagnant blood, shadow. It is not life. It doesn't stream like life. And that is the problem. There is the pathology of that patient. Okay. And then you can go in with whatever and or massage, or you can go in in other ways and then see what is the specific problem. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Elizabeth. Hello. Um, I just wanted to say, um, you said it was. I. Uh, you said it was so exciting, um, this conversation, this meeting, but I think it's very exciting what you said about the um, the threefoldness turning into the fourfoldness. It just seems so important, and I feel very excited about it. Hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, 
Um, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So can we take another question or? Yeah. Monique is next. Hello. I have a question. It came to me. I've been working, reading your books and doing these meditation for just a few months now. And recently, this past week, when, while I was doing this, this question came. I don't know if that's good or not, but it hasn't left me. And the question is, well, for me, the experience recently when I was doing the elemental meditation, I felt this feminine energy, like a feminine energy when I was looking at the candle. And when I was younger, I had a very intense uh, encounter with this being that was almost like just almost a pure light, but it was a feminine energy. And that's how I found anthroposophy when I was 19. Um, because then I wanted to find out what was this? I just had this question. And again, I'm probably getting lost in this third elemental, but my question that came up this time was how is this, uh, is Anna connected with Sophia? Is there a connection there? That's my question. <clears throat> you know, Anna is connected to everything that exists in our universe. She is the mother of all. Uh, even Maria and Jesus, and she's brought everything into this uh, universe. So uh, in my uh, mind, she is connected like a mother to all her children. So, uh, and of course, Sophia and Jesus and Maria and Joseph and even the thrones, the seraphim, the cherubim. Yes. So uh, that's my <laughs> answer to that. Okay, thank you. But she is not the same as Sophia. Anna is Anna. She is the mother of all, the portal through which everything has come into this universe. And when I say universe, it is what we call the universe. That is our bubble. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And could a guardian of a threshold be more of a Sophia, or is that's not what? Well, you have you have four doors into the spiritual world: the door of the sun, the door of the elements, the door of death, and the door of light. And there are different guardians of these different doors. And I am sure also that these guardians may present themselves differently to different. So you might experience Sophia as at this part of the guardian. Okay. <laughs> hmm. yeah. hmm. okay, thank you. Um... Anthony, I apologize. So here is uh, Barbara M. V. Scott trying to raise a hand with uh, with no success. Barbara, can you hear me? Barbara. Okay, I think I'm unmuted. Okay. Now. Yes, you, Barbara. Excellent. Yeah, go ahead. Hello, all. <laughs> Hello, Ari. Um, I'm new here. I'm a, a biodynamic practitioner, and uh, I've been researching light root yeah. uh, for many years now. Um, and I was, uh, for the, about the past three years, uh, I was quite ill. It started with dental surgery, and then it went into long COVID, and then Lyme illness, and I felt like during the Lyme, I felt like all I looked at was um, 
fear, doubt, and hatred. <laughs> and <laughs> the whole time. And I freaked out about it when I felt those things. And then I finally just got to the place where I realized that my thinking was uh, all wrong and not helping me at all. Um, and I made great effort to um, sort of reinterpret and get to um, faith, love, and hope and have been doing so and it seems like it's easier and easier all the time. I I live chop wood, carry water. There's no electricity. Um, and I have a practice every morning called Agnihotra. And I have a prayer that I say in the morning, which includes in the love of Jesus Christ. Um, and it... It just feels like everything is flowing. Everything's okay. And I haven't had any kickback. Any kickback that I get will be in personal relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and nothing really serious. But where the kickback is, is physically. And it's, um, I feel in some ways that I'm, I'm almost in an Atlantean vapor at times. Even the sleeping has been like that. It's now at the place where I'm tired all the time. I could sleep in the drop of a hat. Um, but my dad, it's in um, the paternal line. And when I was born, I had uh, pneumonia. Uh, and then bronchitis very seriously for until I was 12. And my father, when he oh. was in his 20s, was in the Navy. And during the war, he was on the bridge and he took mustard gas. So I have this ongoing cough and you know, expelling from the lungs. Um, how do I Christianize that whole thing in oh. terms? I don't think, uh, I think that is so complicated. If you are not used to Christianize elemental beings, you it's very difficult to start with yourself. So then you need help for that. Okay, so I do have a, a really good practitioner, but he... Um, and he describes it as a miasm. That's a name, yes. <laughs> That's a name that homeopaths often use. So it's very hard to do it on yourself. It is very hard to do anything in the beginning on yourself, yes. Can I do it on my father? <clears throat> if you can see them, I mean, you, you, you ask me, I cannot tell what you can do. Uh-huh. Um, it's almost like you asked me, can I learn to play, play the fiddle? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can. So just keep uh, working with... Uh... If you go into the elemental world and there observe elemental beings, then you can Christianize them. But if you cannot go into the elemental world, then it's difficult to Christianize them. And the most difficult is to start with yourself. Right. So um, I can go into the elemental world, which is what I do in biodynamic agriculture. Good. Then you can do it. Okay. Um, 
could you describe the process briefly of the Christianizing? You open up the middle. <clears throat> you have <clears throat> first you have to observe an elemental being in some way. Hearing, seeing, smelling, uh, somehow feeling an feeling. elemental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you have to find the middle of it. And then you have to sort of open the middle with your hands, like the statue of Christ and between Lucifer and Ariman. You push uh -huh. the Luciferic up, the Arimanic down. And then you invite Christ into the middle. Okay. Very shortly, sir. <clears throat> okay, I'll continue to do that. Yeah. And then it all changes. The elemental being changes. The elemental being becomes moralized. That brings moral into the elemental world right you've answered a question that i had for a long time i always heard that the elemental beings have no morality yeah and but now i kn now i know why they used to years ago right it, well uh, maybe a million years ago or something yes oh, okay <laughs> but we have to bring moral into the elemental world and that is done by bringing Christ, Christ is the moral force. Uh huh. Okay, that's great. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, Anthony. Anthony, hello. <clears throat> hello. Hello, Ari. Again. Oh, again. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Um, if I may go back to your comments on the iron in the Philippines. Yes. I'll, I'll make it brief, and, and I don't know. There's a little scattered. Some notes that I have here. I haven't yes. done the work as, as diligently as I should have over the last month. But the last few days, I've been focusing in on on the quality of, of, of iron. Um, uh, in the earth, um, and especially in our time, and the importance of it. Yes, Be because it is it is what drives us essentially the iron. And yes. so I thought, okay, <clears throat> Michael and the sword that he has, it's cosmic iron. We can imagine it as purified Christian iron. Yes, it's Christianized iron, and and that's our task now to Christianize yeah. the iron. But it's one of the most difficult tasks. Yes. Because Mars does not want to change very readily. No. And we know that uh, Christian Rosenkreutz had asked the Buddha, Buddha Gautama Buddha, to go to Mars and work with Mars and transform it. So it's very interesting. And also, I think I, the last time I mentioned that the work that I've done in, in filming and traveling to different places, and I had a, a, a magnetized piece of iron. You can see that. Yes. You know how magnetic this is. Yes. So that's that's a form. And this, I went into a volcano there where this came from. Where uh, where where was that? It's the northern part of Baffin Island. Okay. Baffin Island, the northern Canada in the Arctic, and it's not yes. far from where the, um, the magnetic north used to be. Now that it's traveling. Yes, yes I know, I know, Baffin. Yeah. So I I just in the thought process, um, iron is in our blood. Yes. Is it not? And I'm thinking of the black magicians and their need to control humanity. <clears throat> so if you can control the iron in the blood, you can wreak havoc, for one thing, to humanity yeah. Yeah. and control it. And I'm thinking that perhaps that's part of their work to, yes. to move into that uh, aspect. And also, I'm not so sure, but there's a lot of talk of, you know, the... Uh, becoming um, transhumanists and the ability and Steiner said it would come yeah. sooner or later but it would be a matter of how it's going to be used yes used for the good or or, or evil and uh, and so I'm thinking that that's part because our blood is essentially made up of 
a lot of iron quite a bit. Um, also, the fact that iron, when it oxidizes, is red, and rust is red. So it has this connection <laughs> to the blood. Mm. Uh, and so what, what I've been getting to, I've been doing some meditation with the, uh, with the, this the one I just showed you, the iron piece. Um, and it's been quite difficult. I'm just now, as you mentioned at the beginning, it, it takes a lot less time to go into it. It's a very heavy piece. You know, this, this piece is very heavy. And, um, but now when I hold it, it almost disappears within two, three minutes. That is, it, it's, it's easier, yes. heaviness disappears and I can go into into more of an experience, but I don't go far with it. And the last one I had was a lot of color. We know that that's one of the stages, but the colors were magnificent. There were blues and purples and, 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 and very alive and very strong and bright, you know. So that was a little bit of progress. Hmm. And so I'm going to follow that through and see where that yes. might take me. Yes. Um, so um what else do i have here the <clears throat> and, you, and you mentioned about forming forming a group that can follow through with what we've learned so far and then i was thinking of dn dunlop at the time of electricity when when uh, tesla gave the wherewithal for the first electrical turbines to be built in niagara falls in the united states dn dunlop took a real interest in that because he wanted to guide the development of electricity, control it in a good way. Mm. And even today, there's the World Energy Council, which he started back at the turn of the century, last century. Mm -hmm. so, um, and there are people that in the world, obviously, that are interested in, in, in not wreaking havoc with a lot of these things that have been developed. Um, so... I guess what I'm getting at is that the time is right now. The time is right to work together. Hmm. It's Harry, you brought up Harry earlier. The world is our, our mystery center. And as groups that we are in our towns or everywhere else, we can develop these mystery centers and begin the process of change. This is what I feel at the moment. Um, so iron, to go back again, when we're tired, the tiredness that was mentioned, often it's the lack, the lack of iron that makes us tired, which means that we lose consciousness. So without the iron in our body, we can actually, in a sense, lose consciousness. <laughs> and um, the usefulness, excuse me, iron can be useful or demonic, because we can build bridges, buildings, uh, transportation system, etc. On the other side, we can build missiles, tanks, and machine guns. These are the two aspects of iron. Mm. And, and our work needs to be, you know, towards Christianizing. Yes. Iron, yeah. In general, on the yeah. earth. Anyway, that's... That so. is very important that we try to do, <clears throat> like uh, the, the two paths that I know one is through the evil that is the volcano down to the six or through the gold from the 10th 11th layer but there are maybe other 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 possibilities too but those two I, I work with personally thank you mm, thank you Nice to see you again. <laughs> yes, likewise. Always. Thank you much. Uh, Dr. Penny Albert, again. Hello again. Um, I'd like to talk about Baba Yaga this time. Um, two workshops. Yes, Andre, I can see you're smiling. <laughs> Two workshops ago, I described going through an experience of shuddering in the body, um, centered in the heart, and I still can't see Are. Um, is Are there? Yeah. 
Oh, now I can see you, yes. Um, so two workshops ago, I was shuddering in the heart region. And then just after the last workshop, I came across by accident um, something about Baba Yaga, which jumped out at me. Uh, that's mm -hmm. what I came across. And there's a picture. Now, I gather that this is taking me right into the world of Slavic myth, folk folklore, and elemental beings. So um, I did some research on Wikipedia, and I discovered that there are accounts of Baba Yaga through all the different peoples of the Slavic world, and it gave short accounts of the different ways that the different ethnic groups represent her. And then when I came to the Serbian account, there was a description of the shuddering. So immediately linked my experience of shuddering um, to this entity. And I wondered if you could tell me any more about you've not yourself. Oh, no, sorry, I have no idea, uh, but I have never uh, investigated this. <clears throat> okay. Well, I had a strong sense that this is where I'm going and it's going to be important and there's something opening up. Um, then then you can tell us about that next time. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now, a second question. Have you had any experience of Nerthus? Or oh, what? Nerthus. Nerthus Niord, in the Atlantean mother goddess. Nerthus, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, no, Nerthus, I... you say. Yeah. This is just a pronunciation I didn't recognize. Yeah. Oh, I cannot um, tell you anything about that either. Sorry. Oh dear. <laughs> oh. That's the other. That's the other place I want to go. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll keep going with both of those lines of inquiry because yeah. they're linking up the Nordic world and the Slavic world, uh, particularly Ukraine. And I think it was going to be work for me in that direction. And I think it might be connected with the first elemental realm. So I wondered, um, two or three workshops ago, you said you were going to tell us more when we were ready about the second and the first realms. And would we have a moment today for you to tell us a bit more about the first realm? And you are not ready. You are not ready. We are now more or less deep into the third. Right. Yeah. So it's not time to discuss that in the workshop. The first six, seven workshops was, or sort of, just getting over the threshold to the third. Now, it is very okay. much into the third, but not yet the okay. second and not yet the first. Some are at the threshold, but uh, not, not, not the most. Right. Not, but we wait but for my, for myself personally to continue where I feel I'm at or? Yeah, you just continue. And when you reach the threshold, you will meet the guardian and then you will get uh, education. But you said at the beginning of this workshop that you were going to talk more about the second and third realms at the end of this workshop. Uh, well, it's not, uh, it has went slower than I thought. So uh, oh, now I hope okay. maybe it speeds up. Okay, sorry. Um, I, I, try, I... I try to comment when I see wh where the different people are, so I try to comment on that level. And right. when I have a reason to talk about it, I will, but I have not had that reason yet. Okay. I've got a further question. I'm confused about when I'm properly in an, one of the elemental realms and when I'm looking at it but I'm not in it. Um, hmm. And 
when I'm looking at it, I'm aware that I'm here and what I'm seeing is there and it's like a movie screen and it's moving and changing, but I'm looking at it, but then at other times I'm inside it and they don't seem to be the same thing. Um, could you comment there? Yeah, there I can comment. And, and that is exactly how I also experience it. Sometimes I look at it and sometimes I'm in it. Right. And if I'm in it, then I can do a work there. If I just look at it, I am not, well, you can do something, but not as effective. Ah, but they're both actual, real experiences. Yes, absolutely. They're, absolutely. They're not just abstract in the head. No, and that differs, actually, you are in. In a way, you can say that in uh, these these levels of, of uh, clairvoyance or uh, spiritual experience, you have the imagination, then you look at it. Imagination, then you have the inspiration, then you are sort of halfway observing, halfway in, and then you come to the intuition, then you are in. Ah. And this might, this might change, actually, uh, from time to time and also on your travel. That's very helpful, linking it to imagination, inspiration and intuition. That yes. makes a great deal of sense. Thank you. Um, and I am a researcher by nature and I've, I've made myself a golden rule since you keep exhorting us not to put a concept onto percepts too quickly. Um, yeah. I have, a, I have a golden rule, which I never break now, which is that I go in, I have the experience, and I strictly do not think anything at all about it until I'm clearly out and it's afterwards. And then I give myself free go and I get into the books and online and or I try to put concepts around it, but deliberately because I think we're going to need new concepts because so many of the existing ones are so out of date and having a, a negative effect. Yeah, uh, I, have a, I have a particular bugbear with use of the word illusion for the physical plane because mm. that was a poor translation from the Sanskrit anyway and it was done by... Victorians with a particular sort of morality and illusion in the English language just carries a totally negative vibe and given that we're going through a planet that we're destroying and we've got climate change and it is so crucial to respect this earth which gives us life I would really much prefer to talk about relative realities rather than pure illusion for this plane because I feel <laughs> it, it it takes away the value of the physical world, which is a real point. reality, but it's yeah. relative. So I wanted to just offer that. Mm. I, I see your point. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank um, you, Penny. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, Andre is next. Hello, Ari, and, and everybody else who's here. Uh, uh, my question is, or perhaps I'm asking for some um, maybe clarity around um, the feminine in this whole sphere that we're um, entering with you here. And I think it was in your very first um zoom that you mentioned anna and you also mentioned the earth as the feminine mysteries and that's what initially uh, enticed me to go <clears throat> over here mm. and um a couple other women two or three i think in this session have brought up that and um last session when <laughs> I think we were invited to um, send in questions through Andre. That was essentially my question is, 
it seems that um, there is, at least in the, in the circles that I have been traveling in in the last several years, there seems to be a real uprising. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean maybe perhaps more of a presence of a divine feminine coming through um, at this point. And, uh, you know, in, in my upbringing, I have always thought uh, through my Catholic upbringing, I have always thought that, you know, um, there was the, just the male Trinity and God, the father, the son, uh, you know, primarily a male presence through the angelic realm and everywhere else, really. And so to, to um, come across <laughs> Anna, who I had never actually heard of before, is um is very heartening mm. so um i'm not really sure if if i'm asking a question here or uh you know if i'm just inviting you to comment maybe further about this divine feminine presence that that i i feel ha is more relevant and important than we typically hear about well i have uh, in a way the same um, path as you describe it started almost by learning or thinking that the whole spiritual world everybody was male except maria <laughs> mary um, but then I realized that uh, the most important is the feminine. But um, but I, I I cannot sort of comment more on this. Um, And, and lately I have been working quite much with this uh, fourth gate into the spiritual world. And um, that is a sort of feminine masculine, uh, the, the um, guardian. It seems to be more and more feminine you say if you call the first gate of the spiritual world the gate of the sun where there is definitely a masculine guardian then you come to the door of the elements where there are one masculine and one half masculine guardian then you come to the door of death where there are three female guardians and then to the door of the light where there is a uh, a sort of a gradient it both female and male so in my world this has become more and more female like you described actually like you the, your path there uh, but uh, i don't know really how to comment on that yeah, i think i what i have said is the comment i'm able to do at the moment mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I just I just feel like in the world that I have grown up in, it's just a primarily spiritual male world. And yes. I have felt so differently for so long. Um, you know, that it is at least equal. You can't yes. really have one without the other. No, it's quite obvious. Quite obvious. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I give a short comment on this particular question? Yes. Um, yeah, because, uh, um, uh, for example, male, more representing female principle, because as you know, male has a female etheric body. And etheric, yeah. as you know, something which is closer to the ego. So in spiritual manner, so males are females. And all your witness, they know about it because when they have male in the group, 
they have female etheric body which is sharing sharing energy sharing sharing the etheric force so female etheric body is male so which is more aggressive i would say etc etc so it has male qualities and speaking in terms of spiritual beings so uh this is only text because we have certain names and we call it like for example males in fact uh being of christ named by rudolf steiner as female being mm -hmm. which is carrying female principles there are uh two types in the spiritual world male beings and female beings but they are absolutely different than we understand it's not let's say physical view so because male beings this is beings which are representing themselves only for example spirit of form it's only spirit of form and nothing else but females beings female beings uh, for example Christ which is ego of our universe this is being which is includes many different beings which are serving for him as spiritual sheets like for example uh, mystic lamp or Christ has spirit of form which is uh, serving for him as physical body for example not as mm. physical bodies, but something which is kind of for us will be physical body or lower ship. So it's quite illusionary questions. So a kind of because in fact when you're dealing with men, you should understand in its in spiritual sense, it's more female. And uh, actually females, specifically, I mean when you see very active females, they are representing male principles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, Jordan. Quick question um, about uh, Christianizing a species of trees that's very sick in um, my area of Montana. And I'm, I'm wondering if you've had any experience with Christianizing um, plants and trees and if you've recognized any difference in them after you've done so. Oh yeah, I've done it with uh, quite often with uh, sick trees and sick plants. Okay, right now I'm working on a way of um, observing the trees, like kind of like scanning them to find the middle. Um, and since it's a full, uh, like the entire species seems to be very ill, it's the white pine, um, the western white pine in this area. Um, and you know, I'm wondering if if I Christianize one, if it because of the mycelial network, if it will kind of yes, you know, okay, it will. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, uh, Bo and Sam. Bo and Sam is next. Hello, Ari. Yeah. Ari. Hi. I'm really excited by your work and I only have seen lots of different videos of your talks and uh, I've been doing more shamanic work for many years but also have a thread of Tai Chi Wu Shigong which is a form of Qigong and energy work and I love the synchronicity of this vol Vulcan, I was listening to a Vulcanarian person talking about volcanoes and then you were talking about volcanoes and I also had a client who came last week who, and I feel I'm changing the nature of my healing work and it seems to be happening with that, with that consciousness of the Christ consciousness. And Good. there was this, I don't know how, it. maybe it's a different language, but I'm finding for the last year, many people are coming with elemental issues or spirits that aren't theirs. And I don't know if that's whether it's an, uh, an imbalance of too strong an Aramaic force or whatever. But anyway, in my understanding of my language, it's like a, a being speaks through them. So it's like a, this elemental energy. They couldn't speak. They found that they couldn't speak but they were making a really big hissing sound and we were able to determine that it was a fire elemental. So, 
and I don't know, Volcano just came into a head and I said, but see, I don't know whether I'm doing relocation, translocation or transmute mm -hmm. transformation, but I bring in the through sound very much uh, a vibration and calling Kuan Yin and Archangel Michael to be with that being, but I don't know if that's the same thing, but there is great peace afterwards and this being has found gone where it needs to go but I have this question of does it really go or is it am I just translocating if it goes you are translocating it should actually stay where it is and then you transform it okay so the question I don't see them but I can feel a peace within the person or they tell me they feel a peace I yeah. don't necessarily see the thing, the being, the energy going. Hmm. Um, so maybe I need to do more research on this. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. The point is, we are not supposed to make anything go away. Yeah. yeah. May, we are not supposed to make the even the demon go away or the disease go away. We are supposed to transform it where there is, and then it will bring something positive to the human being right yes thank you mm. um thank you. thank you very much so dear friends we are working already shall we put a line uh, at some place now and <laughs> i stop i don't know i mean it looks like we have endless questions it's already second circle for bonnie for example and she is asking more um so dear friends we have uh telegram channel so which is great source i mean we can exchange and maybe maybe ari can join us i mean to give some shirt i mean if you have time yeah i will i will sure shirt I... answers um so i will send you instructions so okay why don't we maybe um take i mean bonnie can you be really short with your question yes i can Okay, so and um, then we will take your question and then we will appoint next time and date. Okay, all uh, right. And we will conclude conclude the session. Um, okay, go go ahead, Mon. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering uh, if there is a just a detailed description of the different layers of the earth that Nick was talking about uh, in one of your books, Ari, or um, could you describe them? I mean obviously not in brief right now, but um, where can we find that information? You find it in the work of Rudolf Steiner, you find it in the work of Judith von Halle, and you find also some descriptions in my books, especially the fading and merging book. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah. And Robert, Excellent. And Robert... Mm -hmm also have uh, some descriptions of these layers but most <clears throat> are described the nine evil layers and not the 12 good layers mm. yeah and the and the goal is described there too what we what we should do there i describe it in the merging and fading book great which okay. was published just a few two months ago or one month ago yeah yes, yes i have it i haven't quite yeah. finished it yes yeah thank you okay um so shall we appoint next date Ari? yeah let me see so which will be like in, in about two months so this will be end of April or so. Or of April. The twenty-seven. Hmm. Yeah, there we have to do it. We have to do it the thirteenth of April. Either 13th, or we have to wait to, till the 18th of May. 13th of April or 18th of May, that is Whitson, so that 
will not maybe work either. So then the 1st of June. So we can say 13th of April, I think. Great. Okay. Okay. Good. Oh, yeah. Dear friends, please put on your calendar. So it will be 11 a.m. as usual, uh, Central Time, U.S., Canada, Mexico. Um, and it will be uh, April 13th. Good. Okay, and you know, just a little reminder: can we be all more disciplined when we are uh, registering? So, so this is three steps of registration: one, second, and third. And third uh, uh, step: you should send your approval to email, which is stated in the announcement. And uh, not too many people are doing this, and it just creates so many problems for me. So I have to go in PayPal account, and you know, and uh, uh, and look for you. So, and sometimes people not even kind of putting in memory this is for RS workshop because we have many programs in our branch. Yeah. All right. So, uh, dear Ari, thank you so much for your time and for your wisdom for spending time with us. So, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, looking forward we're april 13th for another session so dear friends please feel free to unmute your machine and say big thank you to ari and uh i hope to see you again thank you thank online you. Thank, thank, you. You. Thank, thank you very much thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thank you ari thank you thank you ari so grateful to everyone thank you to andre contributions thank you andre Thank you. Thank you, guys. Nick. Nick. Thank, Thank you, you both. Andre. <laughs> Such a lot of people. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Andre. Thank you, Andre. You did a great job. Great job. It's smooth as silk. Smooth as silk. <laughs> sure, Nick. Talk to you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Stay well. Bye.